You know what guys, I apologize. That is not editing. About 10% of the way into making the demo segment, I realized that I had not in fact covered any sort of MIDI editing in the editing section. Which is embarrassing. So let's talk about MIDI editing. As you may recall from the introduction, MIDI is the musical language of computers. It's how we tell our virtual instruments or plugins which notes to play. That means that when we edit MIDI, we don't work with audio directly. Instead, we edit the MIDI data that controls our virtual instruments. That means editing things like the pitch, timing, or velocity of notes. MIDI editing in the DAW occurs for two main purposes. Firstly, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or a pad controller with which to record MIDI playing, then editing is the only way that you're going to get any MIDI data into your virtual instruments and synths in the first place. Secondly, even if you do have a MIDI controller to record data, unless you're just a god-tier musician, you're gonna have to edit your recorded MIDI data in order to fix mistakes that you made while playing. Okay, so how do we get MIDI to work in our DAW? What specifically do we need to do? If we want to hear sounds when playing MIDI data, first we have to ensure that that data gets fed to a plugin that can accept MIDI data. Different DAWs have different means of accomplishing this. In Traction Waveform, what I have to do is put a virtual instrument on a track, arm MIDI recording on that track for a particular MIDI controller, such as a keyboard controller or a pad controller, start recording, and play my instrument. The MIDI keyboard and pad controller, however, are not the only ways to interact with MIDI. DAWs provide manual ways to input and edit MIDI data using your mouse and keyboard alone. The three main ways that this is done are through the piano roll, the step sequencer, and through MIDI clips. One type of MIDI editing is done in a piano roll. This is analogous to the piano roll used in player pianos. You draw notes on the piano roll, and when you press play in your DAW, the MIDI notes are played out on whatever plugin you have set up to receive them. The piano roll is most useful for tonal instruments where you care about what notes are being played. Most piano rolls will give you basic manipulations like adding and deleting notes, moving notes, changing the length of notes, changing the pitch of notes, cutting, copying, and pasting, as well as splitting notes using a knife tool. Compared to the step sequencer, the piano roll is generally more sophisticated, allowing for more complex manipulation of MIDI data. Speaking of more complex manipulation, MIDI data can convey more information than just what notes are being played and when. For example, MIDI messages can convey information about the velocity of notes, that is, how hard they are played. Most MIDI keyboards will automatically emit information about the velocity of the note being played as they are being used to record MIDI data. However, the piano roll can also be used to manually edit the velocity of notes. Besides note velocity, there are many, many other MIDI messages which can be emitted by hardware components that can be connected to or incorporated as part of a MIDI controller, and can also be manually manipulated using a typical piano roll. Pitch bend wheel messages are messages emitted by the pitch bend wheel on a MIDI keyboard. This component acts as an easy way for a musician to shift the pitch of what is being played at the moment. Modulation wheel messages are another type of message sent by a MIDI keyboard via a modulation wheel. The modulation wheel on a MIDI keyboard allows a musician to easily manipulate one parameter of an instrument while the musician is recording. Expression pedal messages serve a similar purpose for expression pedals that can be hooked up to some synths and keyboards. Breath control messages are emitted by breath controllers which are expensive, but these controllers can be hooked up to MIDI interfaces or keyboards and allow the musician to control a MIDI parameter in real time with their breath. This can be very valuable for simulated wind instruments, such as audio modeling and sample modeling's physically modeled instruments, which are recognized as some of the most physically accurate virtual instruments out there. Lastly, the sustain or hold pedal messages allow hardware sustain pedals, which you can hook up to your keyboards, to emulate the sustain pedal functionality on a piano. Typically, most synthesizer plugins will respond to the sustain pedal by causing any played notes to be held beyond releasing the key. There are many other MIDI message types beyond this, but those are just a few of the common ones. Now remember that everything is up to interpretation by the plugin that is using the MIDI data. While there is conventional behavior for a plugin to react a certain way, based on MIDI messages it receives, it is not guaranteed that all plugins respond the same way to certain MIDI data. 
For example, certain plugins may not be velocity sensitive at all, or they may be programmable plugins that allow the user to manually map various MIDI messages to internal plugin parameters. Now that we've touched on other potential MIDI parameters, let's talk about the step sequencer. Another type of MIDI editing is done in something called a step sequencer. Essentially what a step sequencer does is it offers a fixed set of steps where you can merely specify whether a note is being played or not. Some step sequencers also allow you to control the velocity of each step. Step sequencers typically offer much more limited control over MIDI parameters than piano rolls. They are meant to emulate the characteristics of hardware drum machines, which behaved much like step sequencers. Overall, they are meant to provide a more simplified approach to beat making. The piano roll can be used to make beats as well, but the step sequencer is confined to this role. It is typically not used for melodic information. Now both the piano roll and the step sequencer allow for note level manipulation, that is, they allow you control over individual notes. However, most DAWs will also allow you to organize MIDI into clips, which you can manipulate similarly to audio clips that we discuss in the editing section. For instance, you can cut, copy, paste, split, and loop MIDI clips. The last thing I want to cover in this section are a few other MIDI manipulations. One of the most useful MIDI manipulations, at least for any music producer working digitally, is quantization, which allows us to lock the imperfectly timed notes of our recording into the tempo grid of our song. Quantization is one of the reasons that we are accused of having no actual musical skill. Groove and randomization are usually applied after quantization. They consist of applying small timing offsets to each note, so that not everything is strictly on beat. In other words, after you take the suckiness out of your timing, you add it back in so you sound more like a human instead of a computer. Another MIDI manipulation that can be performed is transposing notes, essentially shifting them up or down in pitch. Yet another MIDI manipulation that can be performed in some DAWs is strum. What strum does is it allows you to take notes that have been played in a chord all at once and play them at staggered times much in the same way that you would when playing a guitar. Some DAWs also have special functionality for pattern generation as well as arpeggiation. Arpeggiation is a functionality that allows you to play the notes of a chord in a predefined sequence, or simply repeat the notes of a chord. Alright, I think I've covered everything that I want to cover for this MIDI editing section, so we will see you next time with writing.